Hello, good evening once again and welcome back to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and uh, Coral as we uh, get stuck in to day three of Glorious Goodwood with two days behind us uh, and uh, two red-hot favourites uh, winning the feature races on day one and day two. Kiprios winning the, uh, the stayers and Baid once again doing what he does best and coming through with a late rattle to score in the Sussex Stakes this afternoon. He might well have been a very short price uh, and he might well do the same thing over and over again but he keeps on doing it impressively and those late sectionals were very nice indeed setting up potentially a trip to York in a few weeks time uh, we also uh, had a, a nice winner for Richard Hallett of course in the, in the Malcolm and some well backed uh, winners including Oscula getting uh, at, uh, that group win that she deserved uh, at uh, Goodwood today, sneaking up that inside rail under an inspired William Buick, who had a very good afternoon indeed, and he could have a good day three as well. But let us know if you think that will continue. We are, of course, live and interactive on Facebook and YouTube, so do like and subscribe to the stream if you haven't done already. Feed the almighty algorithm. That is true. Uh, get your tips in on those uh, that chat box as well. We'll read them out throughout the evening uh, as we uh, look ahead to the Nassau Stakes uh, tomorrow. But we've got a, an odds-on favourite in the shape uh, of uh, at the uh, the Gostons, um Oh, I completely forgot it. Nashua. That's what we're going for, isn't it? The name completely went out of my head. Eh? Completely out of my head. Uh, we've got all the horses up against uh, her, though. Uh, but she sets a pretty good standard on that win in France last time out. Uh, and, of course, we've got more two-year-old action in the shape of the uh, the Richmond. Uh, and we might well get a St. Ledger clue or two. Uh, and, uh, obviously, plenty of handicaps. And even a Phillies maiden and a sprint handicap to close off the card as well. What more do you want? from a festival on day three. Paul Keeley to my left uh, was in pretty good form on day two uh, and each way accumulated all the picks sort of paid quite nicely uh, Keels and Trillium obviously the cherry on the cake. Yeah Trillium was lovely wasn't she? She did yeah. exactly what, what we'd hoped I mean she just settled great didn't she? Like, you know she'd be f f pulling really hard in bad races uh, you know got maidens at over six foot along and you know got a lead off some speedy horses over five and she loved it. She really did. fast time, although the Platinum Queen was even faster later yeah. on. She looks, a, she looks a bit of a monster, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, she, I mean, I actually backed her anti-post with a Malcolm. Uh, you know, so I was, uh, you know, um, I'm not that worried now, because obviously we backed Trillium and, yeah. and, uh, and the Platinum Queen bolted up in that race, but uh, they were two very fast fillies, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, Platinum Queen might well go, I don't know, Doncaster maybe, or whatever it is. She's clearly very, very quick indeed. Um, and, yeah, Trillium, Pat Dobbs, I thought, was, was the, the epitome of Pat Dobbs there. Um, we had a couple of comments saying, oh, I would have preferred a, a better jockey on board Trillium, but he was comp he's, he's so experienced, completely unfazed, and yeah. he just kind of casually yeah. picked and weaved yeah. his way through well, the which pack. Which way shall I go? Right, the gap's here now, let's go. And that yeah. was it. Like, you know. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, she won easily, didn't she? Yeah, she did indeed. Uh, so, uh, two wins on the bounce in the Malcolm for Richard Hannon. Uh, Tom Siegel uh, watching from home, and uh, a... Uh, yeah, a bit of action at uh, a good one today, including Baid, where uh, I guess we just copy and paste uh, what we've been saying about him for uh, uh, for the best part of a year now. But, um, yeah, he, he does it so effortlessly. And hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, once again, uh, that he will uh, will go up in trip for the rest of the season. And then we might actually see an even better horse. Well, we could see a better horse. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be much better, does he? I mean, well, we'd like to see better competition. That's what we'd like to see, isn't it? Because he's miles better than the Milers. We know that. Run on a quarter horses, you know, a Vadani and a Mishrif and that, horses like that. They're, they're, you know, they've probably set a better standard than the horses he's beating, but he'll beat them anyways. But uh, I like the Platinum Queen that Keels was talking about there. What about the Nunthorpe for her? She likes York. Mm. She could be supplemented in there. Thought she'd be a fascinating contender in that race if, if, they, if they put her in there getting all the allowances. Mm, yeah, whether it's this year or next, I mean, you know, it's slightly... this year would be great, wouldn't it? As a two-year-old, yeah. I love it when the two-year-olds run against the older horses. I think it's great fun, and uh, you know, and Lyric Fantasy did it, didn't she? And she won by miles. Yeah, she's possibly. I mean, she's not obviously different yard, but similar esque to, to to Winter Power, isn't it? Just kind of insanely quick over five, loves the track, and yeah, you get the feeling that um, there'll be plenty of opportunities for her. Uh, on the Naves my over the next year at least. Well, I just think they have, I just think the Nunthorpe was such a great race for two-year-olds. Kingsgate Native mm. didn't it? Won it, didn't he? And Lyric Fantasy did it. I think they'll miss a trick if they don't go for that mm. race because I think she'd win it. I mean, I even really even do. even Chipotle ran quite well in it last year, didn't it? So, yeah. And she's much better than him. So, uh, yeah. What uh, what else would you take out of today, Tom? Uh, I thought the first race was a, was a, was a strong handicap. Mm. I thought Secret State did really well. Uh, he. I'm not sure he'll stay the ledger trip, but I think he's 
certainly group class, definitely worth a shot at the voltage. I thought there were plenty in there. I thought uh, quite a few ran interesting races. Kiel's is in the Ness. In yep. Vaness, went yeah. a bit nutty before the start. So when he settles down, he's got a race in him. I thought Solcum. Solcum. I mean, that was that was the one for me, Tommy. No yeah. chance whatsoever from his position, and he's rattled. We sort out. of predicted it, didn't we? Last yesterday, mm. we said he was a lummox from the start, and they didn't quite go quick enough for him to get back into it. And Mugadir ran a good race as well. I think he'll be better when he's up to a mile and six. So I thought there was plenty to take out of it. Uh, yeah, and obviously Baid was the star. Yeah, OK, lovely stuff. Uh, Paul and Tom then going through day three uh, of Glorious Goodwood. Uh, but uh, we've got rid of David Stevens uh, because he was cursing too many of our selections. So Simon Clare is stepping in to the plate for tonight. Uh, Simon, how are you? Yeah, really good. Yeah, I had a great day at uh, Goodwood today. I was with David Stevens. I think he was claiming he tipped a couple of winners on last night's show. He was gutted that he wasn't able to come on and remind you all of them. But uh, I'll pass over that quickly. I'm trying, um, I'm trying to remember what they did. It what, what were they? I'm so I'm so. Oscula, well, he claimed Oscula. He I did. Think it was, um, Oscula. Uh, yeah, so secret State. Oh, State Secret. Secret State was one of his. Yeah, yeah. Secret State. As well, yeah. No, I think it's all coming back to us now, isn't it? So, um, but it was a good day. Look, by Jim Crowley's obviously the Coral Ambassador, and I spoke to him yesterday, and he, he admitted that although he loves the fact that he's by the jockey, he did admit that actually now that he's on this incredible winning run and he is the best horse in the world, he is feeling that degree of pressure where he said, you know, it's almost the best bit is afterwards <laughs> rather than looking forward to going into the stalls. And, um, and he was like that yesterday. Actually. He had his family there, his wife and children, his three kids. Uh, and you could sort of, I wouldn't even say it's relief. He's a cool jockey, he's an experienced jockey. But yeah, you could almost think that's another one talked off and, and on to York we go. And he's twos on to win the Judd Monty where he will hopefully face like the Mishriff and maybe native trail state of rest. And you do want some new competition. That was the shame that Caribus wasn't there today. He was beating horses he's beaten before. So hopefully the Judd Monte up in trip against some new horses. He'll still be odds on, but maybe a bit more backable. And then we'll see him test it. Because that's what we all want mm. to see now. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the advantage, the Eclipse was a bit of a it was a bit of a messy race, Simon. But the advantage of that is that connections of every horse in there might think, oh, we'll have another crack next time out, and then go to York. And like you said, you could have. Uh, a proper battle of the generations as well. So fingers crossed that happens because, like I said, on pedigree, by he, he shouldn't be doing what he's doing now, should he? Over a mile. So interesting to see uh, how he goes up in trip. Um, like I said, get in touch if you are watching tonight. Hello to uh, to plenty of people uh, watching at home. Paul H, uh, uh, Trevor Clark has got involved as well. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, well, good evening to you. Uh, Stevens ninety nine uh, and uh, and Mick as well. So uh, hello to everyone watching at home as we uh, look ahead to the uh, the next day. But not before reminding you of the Members Club offer uh, here at the Racing Post, 50% off your first three months uh, to get uh, those uh, those replays and those tips and the analysis and uh, exclusive stories and everything pretty much uh, before anyone else does uh, as well. So subscribe to the Racing Post Members Club today, 50% off your first three months should see you pretty much to the end of the flat season. Uh, but uh, we've still got three days, three days of glorious Goodwood to go. Uh, and we uh, we kick off uh, day three uh, with uh, once again uh, another very competitive three-year-old handicap. Uh, they uh, they certainly like to put on these decent three-year-old handicaps at Glorious Goodwin. It often throws up plenty of nice winners as well, as today's might well have done. Uh, and uh, V-Sight and Migdam are seven to two joint favourites for tomorrow's opener. Uh, Asasi is six to one. Warren Point thirteen to two. As good as Sober gets. Is 17 to 2. One ease is 10 to 1. Royal Rift 16s with Blue Trail also at 16 to 1. And bigger prices, uh, the rest here for the first race of the day. Uh, and the betting headed by two horses um, at uh, different ends of their handicap. Uh, Migdam, uh, really impressive uh, last time out when uh, staying on strongly at Doncaster. V Site, beautifully bred and beautifully handicapped as well by, uh, by connections. They they got this horse off a off a tempting mark last time, didn't they? Yeah, this is it. I think Mick Dam's going to have to be really good to beat him, to be honest. I think he's potentially the best horse in the race, and he's getting weight off everything else. And, you know, as soon as the decks were made, he was 7-1. to one. He's less than half that now. Mm. Uh, I can definitely see why. I mean, he's a, a, he's a half-brother to Scope. Um, it's got stacks of other winners in the pedigree as well, all miles better than, than his current handicap of, of, of 82, let alone the 74 he started off. He came from last to first at Sandown and won really easy on his return when that was up to one mile one, having done all his maiden running at seven furlongs. Uh, he's up another furlong here, the third and fourth from Sandown, both won next time. 
Um, it's just so there's so much to like about him, isn't there? Mm. I mean, if he gets if he gets the breaks, I mean, I think Holly Doyle's riding as well as anybody right now. Uh, and you can pretty much say that every week, really, because you never, you never see, oh, Holly's made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, you said, I mean, you said the same about the yard as well. The Beckett, the, yeah, the, well, the, Beckett yard is, the, the Beckett yard is, on, is, is, is in decent nick as well. I think he's just got so much going for him, and, you know, I don't mind. You know, if, you know I've backed him at a bigger price. Would I back him at 3-1? to one? I'm going to say yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you set yourself up there, lovely. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, V-Site seven to two uh, joint favourite with uh, with Migdow. If there is a concern about V-Site though, Tom, it's um, uh, it's how the race has unfolded. We mentioned Solcombe early on. Uh, also, um, uh, Rafe Beckett's winner today, State Occasion, that other uh, handicap uh, on the the round track. They didn't go particularly quickly, and if you were held up out in the back, you you had a big uh, a big task on your hands. Same with all these Goodwood races, isn't it? We see it every year. I, I, I describe it as the, pie, the, the, the pace knife edge course. If they go too fast, if they go, they go for home half a furlong too soon or they go half a stride too quick, you want to be at the back. Mm -hmm. If they go the right pace or too slow a pace, it's really hard to come from the back. We've seen that so many times uh, at, uh, at uh, Goodwood. Uh, I'm with Kiels on V-Site. I think he's got a... I think he's got a Blind. I think he's the best handicapped horse in the race, but it's Goodwood, isn't it? Mig Dam's form is working out well. The third's one since. Uh, uh, sober as sober gets, or whatever it's called, uh, ran, in, ran into, a, ran into a, a machine at Royal Ascot, didn't he, in that George Bowie horse. Uh, Sarsi's won his last two. One ease will enjoy the step up and trip. Royal Rift down the bottom, I think it's quite a good horse as well. So you can, three good old fit, three Charlie Appleby horses in there. We see what Secret State did. We saw what New London did in the, in the big handicap at, on the July course. So you can't discount any of them. I just think it's wide open. Uh, when I started looking at it, like Keels did earlier in the week, and V site was seven to one, he was a cracking bet. Seven to two, three to one. He's a bet, but I'm not sure he's a cracking one. Okay, uh, V site is a seven to two shot. Yeah, and like you said, it is an open race. You've got um, you got your, like you've got your white feathers fall as well. But Charlie and Mark Johnson, obviously, you know, uh, Franny Norton at Goodwood as well, and that. That horse had no chance here last year, but was a bit eye-catching in a nursery and, and, and won on its comeback last time out. And I also thought Natural World had a little bit of a squeak. Yeah, um, yeah that, that race is a, uh, usually a very strong point as this one, the race mm. he was fourth in at, at Newmarket last time. Yeah, and I, he's uh, obviously yeah. he's having to lump a, a big weight here, but um, if New London's a red-hot favourite for... A, for a group race later on the card, then eighteen to one for a handicap yeah. seems a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I, I, I could definitely see me having a, having a save on him. And what I used to do for this race is I used to look up the race at Newmarket, and I'd back the best finish from that with the lowest draw at Goodwood, uh, because that the, the winner from that race came from this one so often. Yeah, and he's um, well, he's not the only one. Schmilson's also in here, but he's drawn out in eleven. So, mm. but to yeah. be fair, both of them they're huge prices. Um, Schmilson and Natural World, Simon, a big price out of that Newmarket race. Yeah, definitely. And it's a, you know, it's a race um, which pretty pays to look for a little bit of value. I know that V-Site is being very well backed. It's actually now 3-1 to one from 7-2 to two in the last sort of, you know, sort of 10, 20 minutes or so. Um, uh, we've got in the no special actually talking about the Charlie Appleby 3, Warren Point, Blue Trail and Natural World. Uh, all three of them together uh, we, w was around 3-1. to one. It's now 4-1 to one as an in the no special. So you get all three running through me from a yard, obviously in great great form we've also actually got a william buick special for tomorrow he's 10 to 1 from 8 to 1 to ride three or more winners he's got a very strong book of rides after his double today but um yeah look i mean i can see the, the favorites will get a lot of focus both b-side and mcdab i just thought that mark johnson with four, four wins in this in the last 10 years white brothers fall you know decent win last time out not too you know, only probably six pounds higher in the handicap um been a value in 18 to 1 each way but uh, it's, a, it's a crack to start the racing car it is. Uh, Buick to ride three on one winners on the card uh, at two to ten to one. Uh, like I said, he was uh, in the right place at the right time pretty much throughout today. But uh, Keel's first race of the day on yeah, day three. Yeah, it's, it's V site for me. I quite fancy him. Okay, V site it is. Um, Tom? Uh, v site. I think V site will win, but it's really hard. I think Juanita's has got a chance as well. OK, uh, one each has got a chance as well, up to Ian Tripp, uh, and I will uh, uh, take a chance on the, uh, the big price natural world. Simon? Yeah, paying four, four places instead of three. Uh, and, of course, there's always best odds guaranteed, even if you get the extra places, which isn't the case with all bookies. And I'm going to go for White Feathers Fall each way on that basis. 
Okay, plenty of opinions at uh, home as, as well. Jesus fancies as good as sober gets and war and point. Um, uh, elsewhere, we've got uh, war and point for Billy A B as well. Uh, as good as sober gets for, for Jonathan Sherritts and uh, plenty of other opinions as well in that opener at, at Goodwood tomorrow. But um, yeah, could be a tough little nut to crack. Uh, the Richmond Stakes is uh, up next at uh, Goodwood, uh, Group Two over six furlongs, and uh, we have uh, another bit of Royal Ascot form on the table uh, and form that's already been frank this week as well not that race but the the race that Royal Scotsman won at this track uh, which has thrown up winners left right and centre so no surprise uh, to see uh, Royal Scotsman put in a seven or four favourite uh, Chateau is three to one Al Carrara is six to one Marshman 15 to two nine to one is Crispy Cat Blue Light Bay is 12 to one Swift Asset is 16 to one and it's 20 to one Legend of Xanadu uh, uh, at uh, Goodwood far the uh, the Richmond Stakes uh, but uh, your favourite here uh, Tom, I'll come to you. You like the juveniles. Royal Scotsman uh, has rock solid form, running a good race on debut. His uh, race here is working out. Royal Ascot form as well. A lot to like about him. Yeah, yeah, lots to like. Sorry, I was waylaid by the biggest carnage race you've ever seen there, the, the, Galway, the Galway plate. I can't believe what I was watching. There yeah. were horses everywhere. Yeah, who knows who won? Uh, who knows who won? Hewitt won Hewitt for, uh, yeah. for, for Shark Handler. Well, I think he won, but they were all over the track. If he, if he lost, he's the unluckiest loser you will ever see because he got hampered by a loose horse for about the last furlong. Yeah, no, he's, definitely, uh, anyway, he's definitely won. Back anyway, back to this <laughs> race. Back to this race. Royal Scotsman, yeah, he's, he's got a... He's, he's clearly the form horse. I just didn't like the fact that he pulled quite hard. He pulled quite hard at, at, at Goodwood. OK, the second and the fourth have come out and won since, but I wanted to take him on, actually. I thought faster ground. I know it was fast at Goodwood, but I thought... Uh, uh, Ascot, but I thought he pulled a bit hard. Maybe had a slight draw advantage this day. I thought there was, I thought there was, there's some some mileage in taking him on. Chateau is the obvious one, but I like Tom Clover's horse Al Carrar. That one in a rocket time at Windsor. He won by three and a half lengths. Clover has some good two-year-olds. He had the fifth in the uh, Windsor Castle just behind Chateau. He had the second in the race behind Chateau at Newbury last time. I just really liked him. He's he's a Shadwell horse. Uh, very well bred by uh, I can't remember the name of the sign now, but but he but he's really well dark. Whatever. Dark Angel, isn't he? Is he Dark, dark Angel? Angel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got lots of good two-year-olds, and I just thought he was value against Royal Scotsman. I think Royal Scotsman's clearly the form the form horse. I don't think it's that strong a race. I thought the ones down the bottom had a bit to prove. I thought it was between the three really, and I thought at the prices I'd give Al Carrara a shot. Mm, yeah, he's he's one of the two-year-olds I've been waiting for this week actually. Tom Clover's two-year-olds past twelve months, Tom. First, first, third, second, fifth, first, 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 second, second, third. And the fifth was in the Windsor Castle. Um, That's right. With Jack Mitchell riding, they finished first, second, first, first, second, second, and third. These two-year-olds are on fire uh, in the past uh, past 12 months. And like you said, this one shot home at Windsor, didn't it? Um, one going Good form away. as well. Swift Asset was in there. Terjan yeah. or whatever came out and won. The form's really good. As you say, I just like I like horse I like horses in you know unexposed horses when trainers have good two year olds. Mm. He knows what he's got. He knows how good Al Carrar is. The other ones aren't turning up here. Maybe they're not eligible. Maybe maybe they wouldn't run in the race anyway. But Al Carrar's coming here, and I think he's going to run really well. Yeah, and of, uh, of the Clover two year olds, um, RPR ninety five first time out. This is his best uh, so far. So yeah, really interesting. Albeit he he is he's. He's run once, he was a little bit slowly away and he rattled home late. This is often a track that punishes an experience. It, it does, yeah, but I mean, 95 first time out is very good, obviously. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It marks him down as a potentially very, you know, group class horse, without a shadow of a doubt. I do think Royal Scotsman's pretty good, though. And yeah. I like the way he went through his race here good because we know he handles the track really, really well. Uh, and I think this slightly easier six probably suit him as well because, like Tom said, he can be a bit keen. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's very much the one to beat. I thought he'd probably win. I think you know. I thought you know. Well, I actually made him my banker. Uh, so yeah, I, I think he'll win. I think it's going to take a good performance to beat him. Yeah, I mean you're right. I mean Persian Force, Blackbeard, waiting all night, show respect. You, you know, you name it. Whatever's come out of that commentary has, has run away. Yeah, well. exactly. It's three Group Two winners in the first in the first four basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, if you include the commentary itself, like you know, so. You know, it is red hot form. It looks like the Coventry is up to standard, and uh, there was no fluke about his third in it. 
Okay. Uh, Royal Scotsman is a seven of four shot. Um, uh, he didn't beat. I mean, he beat, he beat Blue Light Bay five lengths. But interesting to see that that one's twelve to one on returning for another crack at him. Uh, in uh, in a, a well back favourite here for the uh, the Richmond um, uh, Simon. Uh, we've had two. Uh, quite well back favourites in the juvenile races so far at Goodwood this week and they've both come up short so uh, from a bookie's perspective the juvenile races have been on your side yeah they have I mean uh, there's probably about time one of them won I mean there's been four winning favourites in ten years in, in this race um, Jim's very very Jim Crowley obviously our ambassador rides Royal Scotsman he's very very confident tomorrow he said uh, he said he got a bump out of the stalls at Ascot. It sort of set the horse alight a bit. He said the winner tracked him all the way, and he just sort of felt he was a bit unlucky not to win. I suppose all jockeys might think that when they were on a sort of fancy runner. But um, I backed him at Royal Ascot. Uh, he's, I think this is a weaker race. Um, it's an easier track, a faster track, and he's won on it before. So I'm, I'm quite bullish. I think he run, he's been really well backed. He's sort of 13 to 8 and 64 in most places. We're still 7 to 4. And actually, our in the nose special is an enhancement to 2 to 1 from 7 to 4 for the next hour or so which is a max 20 pound uh, stake per customer to get as many people on so we can hold the price but actually even at seven to four it's a clear top price looking at the market so the market's speaking in favor of him it doesn't look that strong a race the ambassador's right again i've got a tip okay there you go royal scotsman then is a seven to four uh, shot set for the richmond stakes uh, but uh, you think he'll win kills yeah i do think he'll win yeah OK, and uh, you're certainly not against him strongly, uh, Tom, um, but uh, there could be an option against him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, look, he's most likely to win, isn't he? The prices tell you that. The prices tell you that. I don't think we have a brain surgeon to work that one out. But I just thought Al Corral was an interesting horse against him. He was seven or eight to one when I looked at it, and I thought that was perfectly reasonable. If Look, the market will tell you if Al Corral's fan. If he, he could easily drift out to a much bigger price than that, and Royal Scotsman could start even money could easily start even money if there's no support for Al Karar because he's better than the others. Yeah, OK. Uh, but uh, fingers crossed Al Karar uh, does take proceedings uh, well. And um, I agree with you, Tom. I think he's got a big chance in the Richmond. Uh, the Gordon takes up next. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, mile and a half group three with another fairly short price favourite uh, from a race that we've already talked about tonight, that new market handicap uh, that uh, has a couple of runners in the opener. Uh, also throw up uh, New London, who won fairly cosily in the end, and his 7-4 to four favourite upped in grade. Who you mile, though, uh, bringing that derby form to the table and obviously um, being sold for a pretty packet. Switch yards as well. Plenty of uh, headlines, potentially, for who you mile. West wind blows. Uh, bolted up in the Glasgow Stakes last time out. It's 11-2. Doville Legend, also a group winner at 8-1. to one. Grand Alliance uh, hung his chance away in a, a race that often throws up the winner for this. He's 9-1. to one. Uh, Unexposed Jack Darcy's 2-2. Two from two. Al Kareem will be the pace angle here. Massa Kale has got uh, a course win here and obviously has got some good group form as well. So we've got a short price favourite here, Keels, but um, there are plenty in against him who, uh, who have got chances in this race. Oh, well, you know, I've had some frustrating you know, bets in this race. No, in the you've, got some, you've got a horse who's won a handicap off a mark of 99 and his favourite to beat a horse who was second in the derby. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? I mean, yeah. what he did win really well. And obviously, New London was, you know, a single figure price for the derby at one stage himself. Yeah. Like, you know, before blowing out uh, the time before. So, you know, he's obviously an interesting horse and, he, you know, he, he, he looked he looked very good at Newmarket. Who you mail? Was it a fluke? Was it not a fluke? I mean, some people don't think it was because he went for 1.2 million. Yeah. He's on his way yeah. to Australia because he's gone to Gay Waterhouse and that's why he's with George Bowie because he cut his teeth with Gay Waterhouse. Uh, and, you know, I mean, Bowie, he's going to be one of the top trainers in Britain for years yeah. and years, isn't he? He's very, very good. Um, I can't imagine he's done that much with him since he got him. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, so it's a good race. I'm still question mark just how good these um, three-year-olds are. Um, so I've taken a chance on the completely unexposed horse in the race that's got the most to find, and that's Jack Darcy for Paul and Oliver Cole. Um, one on his debut last year, was well-backed against Special Envoy, who was a, a long odds on favourite at Newby, but he was actually quite well-backed against him, and uh, it was effectively giving him weight as well, because uh, Benoit de la Sayette was riding him, and it's, it's five pounds theft, isn't it? So, so, and he toyed with him, he won by four and a half lengths, Special Envoy fairly hacked up and a wins a handicap off 92 the other day, so it's not horrific for him, even though I think Special Envoy is not quite all there. Um, but I just like the way he did it. He's related to a two-mile winner, and that was one mile two, and he went through very easy. He's going to get this extra trip. And it's just, it's just interested me that they're risking what looks a very tasty handicap mark of 98 to run in a group race with a gelding. 
yeah. who's literally got no chance of a, a stud career. So well, I mean, he could have run. He could have run today. He could have run in the opening race. Yeah, and, exactly. And he could run in. He could run in any of these uh, handicaps. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, off a mark of ninety eight and. You know, if he's not as good as they think he is, he could, you know, he could finish fourth here and ruin his mark for the, you know, for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I think it's a bold move, uh, and I'm just interested by it. So I've had a couple of quid each way. Okay, uh, Jack Darcy, a couple of quid each way. Then is uh, an eleven to one shot here for this uh, this three o'clock uh, at Goodwood. Uh, Favourite New London at seven to four. Uh, the uh, the Derby form represented not only by Who You Mal, also West Wind Blows. Who, if it wasn't for his run style. Um, Tom, I'd be very interested in this horse. He's a keen goer. He often goes off very quickly. He didn't settle in the derby. Um, but uh, he did a better RPR last time out at Hamilton than Defoe, than Postponed and Subjectivist when winning that Glasgow Stakes. who all went on to win Group 1s. And I don't know whether Goodwood's his track. I would have preferred to see him at York, but I think he's a very interesting runner. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really one for comparing rprs between one race and the next but i get what you mean he, he clearly was impressive up there i thought it was a fell apart that race but he's clearly he's you know I, I i get him totally for this race the only problem as you quite rightly pointed out he's got al kareem in there isn't he mm. and if he goes off like he like he has in the past with al kareem it's going to be a serious test it's going to be a good saint ledger trial this because the saint ledger's wide open now isn't it we've lost westover we've lost well i think we'll lose westover we've definitely lost emily up john doesn't seem to be anything putting their hands up. This this is clearly a, a ledger trial. Uh, I when I did the antipode preview for it, I, I I was keen on New London, but I he was about sixteen to one I think for the for the ledger. I'm not sure I want to back him at seven to four to beat the Derby. You know, the Derby second West Wind blows Dover Legend and all those other ones. So I think that's plenty short enough because it, as Keels pointed out, it was only a handicap he won last time, and, I'm, and while he won very easily in a good time, I don't think it was the best handicap we've ever seen in the world. But look. Uh, Charlie Appleby won the uh, handicap this, morning, this, this week, didn't he, with Secret State this afternoon. His horses are flying. They go very well at Goodwood. I think he's the most likely winner, to be, if I'm perfectly honest, but I think it's a shocking price. I think West Wind Blows is the, is, is the other one, and I, I am interested in, in Keels' case for Jack Darcy because he's an unbeaten horse. Who knows how good he could be? And, you know, you win your, you win your novice by four lengths. You know, you've every, every, every right to come into a race like this. Uh, I don't really fancy who you mal. That's 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 the that's the uh, that's my way into this race. And with New London seven to four, I probably sit it out. But if I do have a bet, it might well be West Wind blows in the hope that he settles better now that he's got the hood off. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, it's, it's one of those bets that um, yeah I want to be having after 150 yards when you uh, yeah. when you kind of think okay who which, which horse has come out of the boxes here. Um, other horses too to mention, Doville Legend, of course he stepped up obviously from a handicap company behind Secret State to win a, a group race last time out. He could be a little bit interesting under Danny Muscat who um, uh, was uh, the, the winner of the, the last race today of course. He's a, uh, a very underrated jockey. And a quick word on Massa Kayla who um, you know, was, was fourth, he wasn't too far behind Westover and Hu Yumel and Desert Crown in the Derby. He won his, his novice here um, and yet yeah, he's what, 16, 18 to 1, 16 to 1? Yeah, they're, they're obviously bits and pieces of form where you can give them a real chance, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I and, mean, you know, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it's one of those races, you wouldn't be surprised if, if New London won, would you? But you wouldn't be surprised if there was a complete ball over at the same time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, yeah, these are the, the frustrating races, Simon, the ones where you don't really want to take on a favourite, uh, but then you also think it's a little bit short. I guess Secret State was a similar <laughs> today. You kind of think, well, you know, I'm not saying this is... It's probably, like I said, the most likely winner. If you think the favourite is the most likely winner and probably the right prize, it's not often a race to be getting too stuck into, is it? No, I mean, it looks a really tricky race, actually. There's only been two winning favourites in 10 years. Um, it's a big price winners. Uh, New London, as I said, is coming from a handicap company, looks worth taking on, but it doesn't look that deep for Gordon State. And, um, and, and you know, Charlie Appleby just seems to have a real knack. He's just having a great couple of years. You know, he's on the form. He's also got strong crop, crop horses. So he's his judgment of what horse to run these kind of races is often quite right. You know, so the fact that he is running a horse who's one off in handicap company in this, I think he takes the plus the yards in form. And um, the winner to have run in the Epsom Derby, this is the in the nose special. Uh, there's four Hu Yamal, Westwood Blows, Grand Alliance, and Massa Kayla. You get them all wrapped up for 11 to 10 from four to five. I think you work out the best price, it works out as a shade of odds on. So you get 11 to 10 uh, in that special price boost. Um, I did half have a look at Sussex. I'll switch Maiden O'Brien to Joseph O'Brien. 
a new owner, a nicely bred, hasn't done a huge amount, but there is a miles off on ratings and it's the biggest price. It has been nibbled at with other firms, but still 40 to 1 with us, just in case there's a total boil over. Uh, but um, yeah, trappy race, plenty of views and opinions. Um, and I think in the end, I have zoned back in really on New London just because of that sort of Charlie Appleby bandwagon with William Buick and Greg Form. And uh, yeah, he is now actually, as you say, you say Westover, right? He's effectively the ledger, ledger favourite. We're four to one Westover, but they may not run. So New London is the five to one second favourite. And a win tomorrow would see and take over his favourite. Yeah. Like well, you said, he, he was, what was he for the Derby anti post? You said uh, he was quite. Uh, he was about eight, I think he was at one point. Yeah. yeah. yeah that was obviously because obviously you went, you went to Chester and then everyone thought he was. Yeah, exactly. An certainty. Yeah. yeah, and he ran no sort of race at all. But you know, yeah. they brought him back, and obviously he ran really well. And they thought, why not go for a valuable handicap with him? Well, he's given, been given that mark. Yeah. Wise move doesn't mean he's just a handicap, but does it? You know? No, no. Um, but uh, I mean, this is the thing, for, especially for uh, for connections. Um, you know, Godolphin, Charlie Appleby, what they their idea of a, a handicapper. Mm. Is just the horse who hasn't quite developed into a Group One yeah, horse. Exactly, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. So, New London seven to four. Then who you mail four to one? West Wind blows eleven to two. Uh, quick shout out to people on the chat. Any uh, any fancies for this? Uh, Alan Keane says great race to back each way. He's going with Jack Darcy. Uh, Jonathan Sherritt says Masakila to follow who you mail. Uh, Joe Lennon says Delville Legend is his nap of the century. Fair enough, John. <laughs> uh, Joe. Fair enough. Good luck with that one. Uh, and uh, thought Grand Alliance was spicy at 91, it says uh, Devo. Like I said, that, uh, that race last time out has thrown up plenty of winners of this, uh, albeit he does have a, a few sandwiches short of a picnic, potentially. Uh, but New London is 7 of 4. Uh, the Gordon Stakes Keels, how are you playing it? Uh, yeah, Jack Darcy. Jack Darcy, it is. Tom Siegel? Uh, well, I hope New London wins, having backed it in for the St. Ledger. Uh, I probably won't have a bet tomorrow, but if I do, it'll probably be on, be on West Wind Blows. OK. Simon Clare, anything for you? Yeah, New London, the favourite, I think, will win this. OK, very well. Uh, and if David Stevens was here... David Stevens would tipped tipped six, wouldn't he, Simon, surely? Say again? I said David Stevens would have tipped so six. He yes, of course he, he has to, yes, he? he lives there. He absolutely has <laughs> okay. to. OK, I'll also have a few for each way on Sussex. Yes, I can't now not back. Yeah. I thought. He flies the flag. He flies the flag for sure. Um, uh, the, the Gordon Stakes then uh, will be uh, will be followed uh, by Group One action uh, in the Nassau Stakes, uh, where Nashua uh, is a uh, shade of odds on here at five to six. Lilac Road five to one. Dream Loper is thirteen to two. Concert Hall ten to one. Uh, Ville de Grasse is eleven to one. Rogue Millennium is twenty to one. Uh, Fontaine twenty fives with Aristia uh, at the uh, the same price uh, here for uh, this uh, this Group One race, which uh, has thrown up a few surprises uh, over the years. Obviously, a nice win for Lady Bo thought last year and one of the most popular results uh, of uh, last uh, season's um, action at, uh, at Glorious Goodwood and Nashua is a three-year-old uh, with a, uh, a rock-solid mark here Tom mark of 114 it's, it's, there's not many of them have come for this uh, this race with uh, uh, with a rating as high as her uh, and uh, and gone on uh, 22 of them have turned up eight of them won they've included the likes of winter minding uh, midday and fancy blue uh, a couple of years ago so the three-year-old Phillies form isn't necessarily working out, but I don't know. It's a bit of a, a bit of a funny lineup against there, isn't it? That's exactly how I would describe it, Ross. Well done. Full marks for you. <laughs> Thanks, uh, <laughs> I I started yesterday and all week thinking that I wanted to take on Nashua. We look at the Oak form. Uh, you know, Emily Upjohn's thrashed. Tuesday's thrashed. Concert Hall's thrashed. Kid Up, one of the fifth horses, thrashed. And she's gone to France and she's scrambled home in a probably a moderate race. And she's turning up here and I thought, just anything, anything that's that's remotely good and I'll want to back her. And while they are remotely good, they're only remotely good, the ones she's up against. They're only group three winners. Uh, Dream Loper did win a group one in France, admittedly, but it was a really bad race. Oh, my God, they couldn't get out of his, uh, each other. Why is those French horses? So she's obviously the most likely alternative, but I don't think she's a proper bona fide group one horse. Uh, the rest, I thought Fontaine might run well at a big price, simply because I think she'll like the step up in trip. I think that when she beat Grand Dam, that form's worked out a bit better. So I was going to play Fontaine each way, but, I, but it's, it's, it's very tentative because I think I think Nash Nashua will probably win, even though I don't. I was expecting her not. I was just, for my life, I would have said I would have been tipping against her all week. But just come to the day, and I'm just not convinced the others are that good. So I'll play Fontaine each way, but it's 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 tricky. 
Yeah, uh, that's sure then is a uh, five to six shot. Uh, Lilac Road uh, for the year that Haggis and Mark Wenth stable, who uh, possibly a little bit uh, underrated in her performances to date, but again, um, she's. Uh, She's maybe a little bit uh, skinny as well, but uh, yeah, Dream Loper uh, and Vilda Grass, I thought were potentially interesting. We talked about this race yesterday. Well, we did, briefly, yeah, we? Uh, yeah, we did. I um, I'm going to lay Nashville, win and place, might even go four places as well. Uh, I'm not too convinced. You know, okay. I don't think the Oaks form is. I think we've, we've seen that the Oaks form isn't any good, and she scrambled home from basically the best draw at Shanty, which I don't think was a good race either. The fifth and sixth have been well beat since. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch her with a barge pole at odds on. I can't see why anybody would. And I think Tom's been a little bit unkind to Dream Loper when she won the pre disband last time. I mean, last year's Champion Stakes winner was fifth. Uh, the runner-ups won a Group Three um, since, and she won it very easily. Um, she went up to one mile two furlong for the first time at the Curra last time, but the ground officially mm. given as yielded the soft was much softer than that, and she was beaten long, long before um, the distance became any issue. She has been it's a bit of a bit of a messy contest as well. Yeah, it was, yeah. Well. But she's, you know, she she has been a bit keen in her career, which is probably why um, she hasn't been stepped up to this long. Because Adam won over a mile and a half, and a half sister won over a mile and six. Um, but she does seem to settle a bit better for Kieran Schumark um, since he's been on, and I think she'll win. I think she should. I, I think she should. Yeah, I can't say I think she should be favourite because you know that would be pushing it too far. I think she should definitely be second favourite. I know they're, they're all tied in close with each other, but they've beaten each other before her and Lilac Road and uh, and Vida Grass in there and, and even Aristia, who's you know you could argue is, is too big a price on the on the pick mm. of her form. Uh, but yeah, I think there's enough in these older horses uh, to to give Nashua a fright. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to get against her and I'm you know, going to have a fair bet on Dream Lovers too. Okay, uh, Dream Loper then is a 13 to 2 shot for, uh, for Ed Walker and, uh, and Kieran Schumark. Ed Walker uh, having a, a good season. Uh, other ones to mention. Yeah, we'll give a little bit of a shout out for Vilda Grass, who um, looked like she was going to win the, uh, the Dahlia Stakes, beaten on the, uh, the nod by Dream Loper, and then went to York 11 days later and uh, clearly left her a race behind at Newmarket. But um, yeah, she was quietly progressive last year, and I thought some um, conditions could be uh, up her street. But yeah, it's just that when you start to get down to it, and you just, they're all listed horses, aren't they, when you get a little bit bigger well, here? Dream uh, Loper's Dream Loper is officially a pound higher than Nashua. Yes. Now, yeah. I know Nashua's obviously run less. Yeah. Uh, and obviously and the age uh, has, has, well. has the potential, but, but yeah, they, you, know, so, you know, let's not pretend, you know, Nashua might have won a Group 1, but let's not pretend she's a proper Group 1 horse yet, it was a soft one. Okay. Every bit as soft as Dream Loper's. Okay, yeah. Um, Nashua then five to six favourites uh, here. So uh, Keels is very much taking uh, the, the favourite on here, Simon. Uh, Tom uh, thought he was going to and then um, kind of talked himself out of it when he's seen the opposition. Uh, where do you stand on the matter? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got a fascinating shape to the race, like you said. I mean, Nashua was trading out sort of four to seven, eight to 13, uh, you know, yesterday, the day before. Now, touching even money in places, we're still five to six. So, and, and looking at the market generally, there are... There is money that likes a dream low, but we're top price 10 to 1 concert hall, but there seems to be a bit of money around for that. Uh, Rogue Millennium. I mean, almost, it feels like the market's just going to be against Nashua. I think we're going to play various horses against her, and a bit like more balls described. Um, we have got an in the nose special on Nashua. We do think she's going to win. Um, so, uh, to win by one and a half lengths or more, he's 9 to 4 from 15 to 8. And in five of the last 10 runnings of this race, uh, the winning distance has been one and a half lengths or more. So it isn't one of those group ones, which is always won by a narrow margin. So if you think she's going to win and win well, that's 94 from uh, 15 to 8. You can actually back it to win by three lengths or more. Obviously, far less likely to happen. That's 5 to 1 and 4 to 1. Of the two, I obviously prefer the, the shorter distance that has been you know, done historically. Um, but yeah, I think it's, a, it's an interesting race. As the bookmaker just feels like it's all set up to get really stuck into Nashua. The, the market seems to be against her. There's the plenty of horse to be back against her. Um, I thought she's yet to really prove she's deserves to be such a short price. I think we'll, we'll have a crack at her. Okay, uh, Nashua five to six then. Lilac Road five to one. Dream Loper thirteen to two. Ten to one bar. Nashua to win by three lengths or more uh, is uh, is out to five to one. Uh, do you have a special for Nashua to get beaten by three lengths or more for uh, for poor Keeley? <laughs> um, I think that's more. We'll uh, come up with one. Yeah, yeah get get get, uh, get involved with that. Um, elsewhere, <laughs> we've got uh, Nashua is my nap for Goodwood. Uh, says Darren Walker. He's on at seven to two anti post. Admittedly. Um, if we were priced up at seven to two, we might have a slightly different uh, opinion. So good luck with, uh, well, yeah, with you'd that. Yeah, you'd back her, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I'd back, I'd back her at seven to two, but yeah. you, you've got to you've got to look way. at what the prices are now, haven't you? Yeah, uh, you know, simple as that. 
Stevens 99 is chancing Concert Hall with the, uh, with the cheek pieces. Uh, Racing Demon is going for Rogue Millennium each way for the aforementioned Tom Clover, who uh, might well have a, a good uh, day tomorrow. Uh, and uh, not too many other uh, opinions. Ian Wicks agrees with Keels. Uh, Nashua's form is terrible. Dream Lopers won a Group 3, a Group 2 and a Group 1 is the best horse in the race and is a massive price. So uh, plenty of opinions there for the Nassau States. Uh, will Nashua uh, be uh, romping home or falling out the back of the telly? Uh, Keels, you hope it's the latter and you, uh, you hope what beats her? Uh, Dream Loper, the number one. Okay. So as long as she doesn't win and she's out of the frame, I'll be happy. Lovely stuff. There we go. Um, Tom? Uh, well, I hope Dream Loper wins now for Keels. Uh, I really have no opinion. I'd like Nashua to win because I like her. I like her. I like, I like classy Billy's like, you know, she's Frankel and she's very well bred and I'd like her to win, but she's got to prove it. She hasn't got the form yet. Okay, and that's why it's five to six. And uh, for you, Simon? I'm always a sucker in a sort of an open one. I think an open group, I'm a sucker for an Aiden, a Brian, Ryan, a more combo. Concert Hall wasn't far behind Nashua in the dark, in the opens. Uh, got uh, all sorts of tr bits of trouble in the uh, pretty post stakes of the Curra, and I think the Belmont stakes turned into a bit of a sprint over a 10 furlongs, and she was just done for toes. I think Concert Hall value at the top price, 10 to 1 with pole each way against uh, a weak favourite. Okay, and I'll be um, I'll keep my eye on the price of Ville de Grasse, who could outrun her odds for Sir Michael Stout. Um, that's the, the feature race of the third day of Glorious Goodwood then, uh, with uh, the, the Gostons and three-odd Nashua heading the betting uh, there. A very different proposition up next, a seven furlong nursery, uh, where uh, plenty of these come into uh, this race with uh, eye-catching handicap marks. Uh, but you could have said that certainly about True Statesman last time out, who was backed off the boards and bolted up and... Uh, Mark Johnson, seven furlong nursery at Goodwood. He often uh, throws uh, a handful of darts at this race. No surprise to see this one at seven or two. Seductive Power, five to one. Far Shot is 11 to two. Sunningdale is eight to one. Miss Jungle Cat is eight to one. Prairie Falcon, tens. XJ Rascal is 10 to one. Uh, Faisal Road is 11 to one. And it is bigger and uh, better. The rest then here for this, uh, this 4-10 contest. Seven furlong nursery here. Uh, and as we've seen over the seven furlong trip this week so far, uh, track position and draw is going to be key, Keels. Um, and the, the thing that stood out for me for this race was there is a hell of a lot of horses here who are stepping up in trip and unproven. Uh, there's only one or two who have actually shown that they get this uh, this distance, and one of them being the, uh, the favourite. Mm, yeah, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, over the last 10 years of this race, um, Mark Johnston's had three winners and a tri-cast. Mm -hmm. Richard Hannon's had three winners and a forecast. Uh, and they were at the head of the market, the Johnston train true statement... Uh, followed by a seductive pair. Now, two statesmen did uh, win really well at Chester last time and proved his days. And I just wonder whether he blew the handicap mark. I know I said that about the stout horse on the, on the first day. He yeah, absolutely gagged true. up, so it might not be right. But every one of the last 10 winners of this was making his handicap debut. All of, all, all of Johnson's were. And he went up at eight pounds for winning a bad race. Mm. I mean, he off eighty three, he won you know, it really well. He'd, he'd be after, he'd he be, won it really yeah. well, like you know. But he's up to ninety one now. He's got to give seven pounds to Seductive Power, who uh, ran in two really good maidens uh, in May. First one won by Dark Thirty. The first and second in that race have both been placed in Group Company. Then he was fourth to Isaac Shelby, who obviously won the. Uh, oh, which one was it? July six. July six. Yeah. 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 Uh, next time today, really good. And then then he came out and absolutely. Bolted up in another race, another race over six furlongs at Newby, took it up a fair way out, won very easily. Uh, he's by Cody Bear, he won here, he's absolutely bred for seven furlongs, uh, so he's going to improve. He's got track two. Uh, I thought he should probably be a favourite ahead of Strew Statesman. I would put a word in for Sunningdale, who was fourth to him at Newby, he did plenty wrong and was finishing really strongly. He'll get seven furlongs as well. Uh, first time hooded as well for Paul and Oliver Cole, but uh, I do quite like the look of seductive power. I've got the right profile with a hand with Okay, seductive power then for uh, Richard Hannon and, uh, and Sean Levy, and of course Richard Hannon's having a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good time of it with his uh, his juveniles, Trillium. He's also had a, a winner at Leicester tonight from uh, from the two-year-old crop. So, uh, seductive power could well be the one for the the Hannon team. Uh, but true statesman heading the betting here at seven or two. Uh, other ones that there's plenty of. Um, uh, Royal Ascot uh, form on offer, including Far Shot, who probably should have won last time out as well. Tom uh, Faisal Road out of the uh, the Chesham, uh, beaten out of sight, admittedly, but uh, this is uh, this is a hell of a lot easier. Um, and I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the trip, but I thought there was a hell of a lot to like about Miss Jungle Cat's win uh, last time out, and obviously that Lazoo form doesn't look too bad either. But 
I started to Carl Burke and Clifford Lee, they've sent a lot to Glorious Goodwood this week, but you get the feeling that the yard to um, line ones up for Goodwood at plenty of weeks in advance and maybe maybe beating the uh, the newcomers to the punch a little bit. It's possible. It's possible. It's interesting that, as Kills pointed out, uh, no no horses that run in handicaps have, have, have won this. Uh, I've run in nurseries before in the last however many years, he said, but that, that backs up that theory, doesn't it, that people have don't want to blow their handicap. I quite like Far Shot, to be honest. Uh, Gosden, two-year-old, started odds on one to two on his debut. I know it was a bad race. Went to the Windsor Castle. Uh, that was over five furlongs, clearly too short. And then ran a really good race at Ascot the other day. Ran a really, really fast sectional. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to looking at those Ascot sectionals. And he ran a really, really strong last sectional. I think he'll, he'll love the step up to seven furlongs and what he did there. Trap one is tricky because if they all come over on top of him, but I think the cutaway's still away, so I think that'll still be a good draw for him. Big danger, I thought, was XJ Rascal for George Bowie. He was my selection from, well, he was going to be my selection on the five day stage. He got trapped 12, and that's put me off him because I, I watched the uh, Oscula race today and thought, you know, all those ones that got trapped out wide had a problem. As soon as I think that, it'll change so yeah. i wouldn't put anyone off xj rascal and i will have a few quid on xj rascal myself they were my two i just thought uh he was impressive at brighton i think oscula started at brighton uh uh like like uh he did xj rascal i think george bowie likes to use it there to get his horses well handicapped they went up to carlisle that form's not bad horses that ran that won that race ran in a really good race at red car today hoy won it and he was second to a horse that had run well in the coventry up at red car today with the third horse was placed as well and whatever so i think that form's pretty good xj rascal's form there uh, just trapped 12 it's my it's my issue true statesman clearly got a great chance looked like a four-year-old against those other juveniles the other day didn't he, he was huge so given mark johnson's record uh, he's got to have a chance but i like far shot and xj rascal Okay, uh, far shot is 11 to 2, uh, shot XJ Rascal is 10 to 1. Uh, but uh, yeah, there was also the, the, the 7 polar handicap at the, at the end of the car today, wasn't there, Tom, as well? And your eyes yeah. were all drawn to those coming down the outside, and suddenly you heard Lyndon B, and you went, oh my God, he's, you know, the, the winner snuck up the inside uh, without anyone noticing. So um, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky to, to overcome that, uh, that, uh, that wide positioning. Um, True Statesman is seven to two. Uh, Keel thinks he might have blown the handicap mark, but it might well just be that uh, they were they were so confident that they've got a potential listed or group horse on their yeah. uh, their hands um, that uh, they just uh, smashed into him. Simon, what have we got here, place wise? Any uh, any price boost? Any extra angles? Yeah, well, we've got an extra place. That's four places instead of three. Um, quite interesting that uh, the money's come for well, far shots be quite well back. Draw one, that low draw, I think will. Be a fact that seems to be like real confidence in his chance, but the biggest mover actually quite interesting uh, with form figures eight third, eight third, fifth Prairie Falcon drawn five again, a good draw, a uh, halved in price today, and now uh, 10 to one with us. There were 25s earlier today, and um, all its form over six furlongs, all its form staying on at the death, running on. So clearly, maybe they feel that's going to really appreciate the step up and trip and may have a, have a bid in hand. So that's probably the, the big one for money. Um, yeah, I thought centre court may be mildly interesting. Obviously, that Mark Johnson form in this race. Obviously, had the winner yesterday. Uh, you know, they got the favourite. They also got centre court, who uh, won well on debut and actually had no luck in running at all at Chelmsford last time out. So maybe there's still a bit of uh, you know room in, in, in centre court hand again. Mark drawn three as well, so good low draw. But uh, yeah, tricky little race. Yeah, isn't it just? Uh, it is a very tricky race. See if anyone at home's got any uh, uh, any angles in. Paul Hayward's with uh, with far shot. Um, Stephen's ninety nine thinks it's a swerve race, and he might be right given how we're uh, we're talking round it. Um, uh, Chris Meister says seductive powers handicap mark is giving me those come to bed eyes, which is um, uh, I think maybe Keels and Tom might make a note of that, guys. Maybe put it in your analysis in the future. <laughs> Lovely line there. Uh, but uh, and uh, Miss Jungle Cat for Jonathan Sherrick back to the last couple of races. Yeah, and uh, I think I might. Um, I've been suckered into a couple of car Burks this week, and um, it's uh, not worked out necessarily uh, so far. But don't want to go off them yet. So I think Miss Jungle Cat might have a chance. But the nursery uh, Keels, are you uh, you think seductive power? Mark? Yeah, I like seductive power. I've had a little saver on uh, on the thing that she beat Sunningdale as well. Though. Okay, what very well. Um, and uh, and Tom, uh, far shot for me. Far shot, far shot it is, who was a little bit unlucky last time out. He's at 11 to 2 shots at 5 to 4, 10. Uh, Simon? Centre court for me, each way, a little bit of value. 
Okay. Centre court, it is uh, at uh, double figure odds. And like I said, Miss Jungle Cap slightly for me, but it does look a bit of a nightmare race. Um, which uh, this won't, of course. Five furlong handicap at Glorious Goodwood. We know who's going to tip the winner of this. He'll set up his. Before we go on, Ross, yeah. before we go on, can I ask, can I have a coral special on the number of puns in this race? Because you have Swayze, you have Sir Henry Cotton, and you have. Cape Moss. Yeah. I cannot believe you're not going to get about 20 in. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've, I've, look, I'm, I'm trying to give up on puns, all right? I'm trying to give them up. It's it's a, it's a horrible addiction that I have. It's a problem. Uh, I need to just, you know, I need to keep my mind <laughs> on the game. I made a joke about Scorpio this afternoon at Live On Air. Nobody got it, and I got a lot of abuse. <laughs> Uh, I said he was going to come come good between the end of October and the end of November, and nobody cared. <laughs> so I'm trying to give it up. Well, I mean, even I've got that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Look, and I can't make jokes about Swayze. I'm, I'm you know, I'm at, I'm at breaking point. Sorry, point in break. No, hang on, I can't. Point break. Point <laughs> break. <laughs> point break. Oh, get it. Kate Moss. Kate Moss. Surely you've got one for Kate Moss. Look, I, I, I'll... No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> never mind, never mind the puns. You come, every single sprint handicap, every single sprint we do on this show, uh, we come to you and you, you huff and you puff and you blow your house down and say you don't care about sprints and then you throw in at the end. Well, but there was one that caught my eye. So <laughs> never mind my puns. Which, which, which horse are you going to reluctantly tip to win? Get ahead. Move on. That's it. That's all I know about it. I watched Get Ahead at, at Ascot the other day, and she was is it he or she was hampered about 412 times, as they as is her as is the want in five furlong sprint handicaps. A very good one, and by Mountain Peak, thought she was coming to win actually, and I thought she was going to be placed, and then she got completely chopped off. This is much worse against her own age group. So while I uh, uh, don't know too much about the others. I do know a bit about Get Ahead, surprisingly enough, and I thought she had a very good chance, even though she's in trap one, which uh, might be good, might be bad. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, that, it, in theory, it's bad, Keels, but they went, again, they went so quickly the day with Night on Earth that it set it up for Lord River coming down the centre, and that's, that's yeah, what we're saying I, I about the track. Uh, but look how badly beaten Kidwell was right out, right out in the middle. Yeah, now, true. You know, and I think we've seen evidence since then and what I mean, obviously that night, on, that night on earth, there was 101 shots stayed on the rail yeah. uh, and was only beaten just over a length. Uh, in the race afterwards, they were coming onto, onto the rail. They came onto the rail today. The first three home, OK, it was, it was truly a rocket Rodney and, and, um, uh, and Wallbank. Yeah. Uh, but the rest were beaten out of sight. I think that there's a little bit of evidence to suggest you don't want to be there. I wanted to put up Get Ahead as well because she has been running well in better company. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if she gets the brakes, she'll go very close. But I think she's going to have to come across and come through horses, and it might be a bit of a worry. So I was just going for one a little bit close, you know, more central to, to near sides. Only drawing the stall seven, mind you. But Dusky Prince just keeps on winning, doesn't he? Yeah. And I, you know, and I just quite, you know, I quite like him. I think he's quite tough. They won. They were they. The front two pulled well clear last time. The second and fourth finished second and sorry, second and third. I think it was finished second and fourth. In the jump jockeys, uh, not yeah. at York on Saturday in a field of 20. So, you know, I think that's pretty solid form. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'd, just, I'd go for him. I mean, it's, 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 you know, if I was having a bet in the race, I'm not guaranteed to, it'd be one of the smaller ones because uh, I did find it very, very hard. And, you know, I'd be having a proper bet and get ahead if she was drawn the other side. Yeah. Okay, um, get ahead then is a is a six to one shot. Dusky Prince is seven to one. Um, I thought that potentially the key piece of form was the uh, the race won by Shamlan back in in April here. Um, uh, I quite fancied this horse at, uh, at Sandown. He got a little bit far back on his penultimate start, and um, Chester last time I didn't particularly go to plan, but um, he beat Sir Henry Cotton, and I thought those two could be interesting. Um, obviously, uh, Sir Henry Cotton's got a fair way to go to uh, to turn around the form with uh, with Shamlan. But, um, you know, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he could be put in the right place. Um, and um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, again, he probably did a few more a few more days and maybe he'll do a bit better in August. Uh, no, that's not even working. No. But uh, it's an open race, so he'd have a chance, oh, no, no. wouldn't he? He'd have a chance. Uh, so uh, not a lot of people fancy Sir Henry Cotton, but I would. Simon? <laughs> I count for five, do I win? <laughs> Yeah, you win. 
<laughs> yeah, that's about par for the course for me, I think. <laughs> it's ahead of a race, this. I mean, there's, it's, there's seven horses, half the field, priced between six to one and seven and a half to one. So, I mean, it really is one of those great uh, 500 sprints where you, you know, you've got pays where you take a chance. Interesting, the best backs has been the both Garcon, drawn 14, uh, over on the near side, Mick, Mick and David East be came back. Very good five further form, went up to six levels at Newmarket, didn't get home, back to five. Uh, looks very interesting to me, six to one from eight to one, that's been backed. Uh, but yeah, it looks very tricky. Paying four places instead of three to give everyone a chance of a good equal way bet. But uh, yeah, it's pin time. Yeah, absolutely. Swayze, six to one, then we get a head joint favourite. See if this at 4.45 at Goodwood. Uh, Keels, uh, tough little race, but what were you going for? Uh, I was going for Dusky Prince. Dusky Prince. Uh, Tom? Uh, get ahead for me. Lovely stuff. I'll follow that uh, that Shamlan and Sir Henry Cotton form from earlier in the year. And Simon? Yeah, I'll follow the money. Le Beau Garçon, back to five. Lovely stuff. Uh, yeah, Le Beau Garçon comes out of that lethal Levi form. Uh, last race on day three of Glorious Goodwood then is a, a Phillies maiden for the two-year-olds, over seven furlongs, with 18 of them going to uh, to post. Uh, and this could be uh, very tasty indeed. But uh, again, it is that seven furlong trip. But interesting to see uh, that the top two in the betting are drawn double figures. Zaga is seven and two. Looking Brew is seven and two. Miss Dynamic four to one with Sparkling Beauty at fours. She's hot at nine to two. Uh, those five dominated the betting. There's only a big jump out to Daydream Dancer at 11s. Beric Law at 18s with Run Simba at 18s. Uh, and uh, yeah, not many uh, at uh, bigger odds uh, cashing the eye particularly. But uh, so Michael Stout and Rafe Beckett have the front two in the market, but they aren't particularly well drawn, Keels. Yeah, uh, this is exactly where a maiden should be on a race card, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you can just yeah. go home. They're like bumpers. <laughs> like, you know, who cares? You can cares? watch a replay later. Watch a replay you? later. Yeah. Why, why are you going to have a bet in it? Yeah, that's it. Like, you know, so, uh, yeah, I've really worked really, really hard with this, and I went for the shortest price with a low draw, and that was Sparkling Beauty. Okay who finished second at Newby last time. Uh, I think the fourth, fourth and fifth or fifth and sixth have won since, so there's, there's a bit of substance. The form trained by Richard Hughes, he's, I think he's had a couple of maiden, maidens go close and just remember Ring of Bear on soft ground last year. Uh, second, was he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, her. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. I mean, the race has worked out quite well at Newbury, travelled mm. really well, so yeah, mm. definite interest for, uh, for Richard Hughes and Ross of Ryan. Uh, Tom? Yeah, uh, as you say, it's a drawn thing, but I think I think in these maidens, there's quite a. I think I think it's easier to overcome high draws simply because half of them don't know what they're doing, and a bit of uh, experience from a high draw, you might be able to get over. So who knows uh, what's going to happen? Really, I thought it was wide open. Zaga maybe might be might might be the one I would go for. Although it was, well, no, it's not interesting because uh, Brian Moore's on the table horse, isn't he, for Rafe Beckett? Lucky, lucky brew. So, I, look, as Keel says, it's a maiden. It's not my type of race. I'd go. For, I think. I think the best form might be Zaga. Okay, Zaga seven to two. Then with lucky brew. Um, any extra places for this one? So Keels can maybe stick around, Simon. Yeah, no, it's very unusual if in a maiden Philly state. It shows how competitive it is. We're going four places instead of three. Um, interesting enough, the best back in the last few hours has been Miss Dynamic on debut for the Charlie and Mark Johnston team with a quite an eye-catching booking, William Buick, obviously nicely bred, cost about 78,000 guineas or something of sales, uh, four to one, was sort of seven to one-ish earlier. Uh, Jim Crowley rides She's Hot to his ninth uh, at Royal Ascot, um, they're going up in trip again here. She needs to learn how to settle, he said, but she's quite talented and she's been uh, reasonably solid at nine to two, but yeah, tricky little race. Okay. As I said about five times today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might be a, it might be a tough day tomorrow, Simon. I think was, uh, <laughs> we'll get into the uh, the bottom of it. But um, uh, hopefully that means though that uh, if we do find any winners, it'll be decent prices. Keels, um, uh, last race of the day. Yeah, sparkling beauty for me. Sparkling beauty. That's exactly how we describe you, Keels. Off uh, <laughs> Tom. Uh, it's a no bet race, but Zaga uh, would be my my two pennies worth. Yeah. Okay. Lovely stuff. And Simon, you'll be keeping an eye on. She's hot for Jim Crowley. I'll be loyal to the Coral Ambassador in the in the face of no other no other reason to have a bet on the race. There you go. If in doubt, uh, go down the uh, the Coral route. Simon works yeah. every works every time. Uh, and uh, quick shout out before we uh, wrap up: Darren Walker, Tom and Paul, Galway Hurdle. Galway um, Hurdle. Oh, I've backed a couple in that, haven't I? Uh, I have backed Vina Ardenza. Yeah. And far out. There you go. Vina Ardenza and far out. Tom. Uh, I've backed Jesse Evans, who I thought should have won last year and is a pound lower this. Okay, lovely stuff. There you go. Darren Walker. 
slipped it in right at the end for you. What a treat. Uh, that uh, brings to an end in the know uh, for uh, day three of Glorious Goodwood preview. Uh, but let's get the naps. Hopefully we can uh, rattle in a nice price uh, on day three. Uh, Keel's played it safe today uh, with the Platinum Queen, who, to be fair, absolutely bolted up. Uh, any riskier today, Keels? Uh, no, not really. It was a toss-up for me between v Sight and uh, Royal Scotsman. I just do think Royal Scotsman will take the world of beating, so he'll do in the Richmond at 2.25. OK. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to take you on. I'm going to have to take you on with Al Karar, Keel. So uh, apologies in advance, as yours probably beats mine. Uh, Tom? Well, that's lucky for me, because now I can have V-Sight. Well, yeah, I thought that. Yeah, I was thinking of you, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Keel. Yeah, it's turned into a game of poker here at the, uh, the end, of the, uh, end of the show. Simon, nap of the day? I think New London will win the Golden State. OK, there you go. That's it. That brings to an end the uh, the show for tonight. Back same time tomorrow, of course, uh, with uh, hopefully a few more quid in our pocket. Uh, but uh, enjoy day three of Glorious Goodwood. This has been In The Know. Uh, thank you to Paul, Simon, Tom, and more than those, everyone at home watching. See you tomorrow.